to say the very least. So let's take a look at the other features. Primal. Oh my god, Primal. Okay, this was a sort of a action puzzle game, I guess you could call it. PS2 game. Um, an interesting case of something that was sort of hyped up like it was going to be some big deal, and I guess the game's okay. But it was a little bit clunky, and it just sort of landed into the sea of shit that other games that came out in this generation that people just forgot about. Oh, fuck. Okay, so I thought, hey, there's a demo in this. Oh, wow. Alright, let's, let's, uh, let's play the demo. I'm going to put a demo in the second half of this demo disc video. Let's skip over all this. Okay, so the gimmick of Primal is that you play as this girl named Jen. And she is sucked away into a demon world because like, uh, her boyfriend got kidnapped. That's what it was. And she's out there to rescue him. And as it, as it turns out, she is, and he is too, I think half demon so um let's see if i can figure out it's been a okay Any idea what we should be doing next then we must make our way over to the fair eye fortress and find divina's quarters get this little gargoyle dude following you around you can turn into a demon which changes like your abilities so you can you're stronger, or you can fight better, or it helps you do puzzles, or something like that. Which is pretty cool that they, uh, the transformation. Pretty good looking, especially for like a PS2 game. I guess back in the PS1 where you saw like, um, in a few, well, I'm not going to get into that, never mind. <laughs> Fortunately, like, well, I played through the game for good ways. I never beat it. It does sort of get boring after a while. Enemy lock on. Swap lock on. Right attack. Left attack. Uh, okay, so it's one of those ones where you use the shoulder buttons to attack. They made a big deal about the made a big deal about the voice acting in this. I think the this dude here, this gargoyle fella, he is the voiced by the guy who voiced a reptile looking dude on Babylon 5. And the girl was voiced by you know, I don't know her name, but she was on she was in some stuff. Made her boobs smaller. She was in some stuff. Uh, Hercules and Xena and stuff like that. I guess this is back when they... Back when they... Uh, it's kind of a common thing nowadays for the voice actors. If they get a celebrity voice actor or something of the sort. See, so look how combat looks kind of different. She's got these claws out of both hands. Kill it, damn it. <laughs> okay, this is not working out for me. I've not played this game in a long time. <laughs> Um, I don't know what I'm doing.
Oh, she got kicked back into being a human. I guess because she ran out of health. I don't know. Fighting is actually going easier as a human. This is clunky as fuck. <laughs> And you got this weird, uh, sort of post-processing effect. I guess maybe because she's running out of health. Die, damn it. What's... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, this is an incomplete version of the game also. Because uh, demos were oftentimes released before the game release to drum up hype. This is all part of a hype campaign. So maybe the <laughs> maybe the actual game controlled or looked better. All right, so I can switch to the dude. And he's stealing green shit. So you need to pick this stuff up, Scree. That's your name. Get over here and pick this shit up. Oh, I thought he was going to eat it instead of jam it into his crotch. <laughs> I guess the game doesn't look bad for a PS2 game. But I can't get too... I can't do too much of this. I gotta... I can't get the entire episode bogged down playing a demo to Primal. Oh, she getting shot by arrows. Look at that shit. Sticking out of her neck. <laughs> Jeez. Girl's not even reacting to it. Jammed it right into his torso. <laughs> Damn. We'll have to find another way in. <laughs> oh, PS2. Oh, can you fit through here? Yep. I guess uh, Gargoyle Boy can't Come fit through on. that door. Move it. Uh, well, she's not strong enough to open it, but maybe the demon version is. I don't know. Is that how the puzzles work here? This thing weighs a ton. No. Your help here. Okay, so I think I need Gargoyle Boy to help. So I need to do something to... I don't know. Anyway, yeah, uh, about nine minutes into the video, I'm gonna have to skip out of this uh, demo. I don't know how to get out of this. Way too heavy. Looks like we got a bunch of different things. A music video, which I'm not going to play much because I'll get him. Uh... Is this a music video? Sort of. Alright, I'm not going to play that. Exploring Primal. survival in the world of primal as you fend off kings and queens of the underworld to survive you'll need not only to master a classic combat system but you must use your wits as well while exploring the realms of primal you can control both jen and scree 
and it is up to you to decide who is best for each challenge. Jen and Sky have both got very different abilities. Jen's abilities are all based around her demon forms, so with each demon form she gets a different weapon and all her abilities are kind of very focused towards combat and that side of things. Scree doesn't fight at all, so his side of things is much more kind of based on the exploration and puzzles. So he can climb walls, he can jump, he can lift heavy objects. It's not very much based around his kind of strength. The puzzles in the game are really going to require the player to think about who they should use really between Jen and Scree. Sometimes Cambridge they can Studios. Use the abilities he has, sometimes Jen. A puzzle that springs to mind is at the start of the first realm you play, Jen hasn't got any weapons at that point, she can't fight, she's not got a knife yet. And then you come across a cave that's got lots of nasty beasts inside that she's not going to go in there because she's going to get eaten. But Scree being made of stone isn't particularly tasty looking to these creatures, so he can go through there. And then because they're kind of quite beast, kind of wolf-like kind of creatures, they're actually scared of fire. So he goes off, finds a torch, and then brings it into the cave, and then he can keep all those animals at bay so Jen can go through unharmed. There's more that kind of puzzles we've got. Avoiding the enemy is not always possible. In Primal, the combat system is reminiscent of classic fighting games. The combat system is kind of quite inspired by games like Soul Calibur and Tekken. What we wanted to do was capture the essence of a proper fighting game. So we have a full combat system that has all the kind of moves you'd expect. Blocks, parries, counter attacks, combos. So there's a real sort of power, I think, to the, the combat sequences that we have. She's got her four basic attacks that she has that she just put off if you just hit the button once. But each attack has got a little window of opportunity that you can then go on to do a combo attack. So we've got about 20 attacks for each of the different demon forms that she's got, so it's quite a lot of moves. And the deeper down the combo list you get, the cooler, the more powerful, the more impressive looking attacks you get. And the other thing that, that I think is a very cool aspect is when you're fighting a character and you get them to this point where they're stunned, you don't have finishing moves that you can then do. So each of the different demon forms has different finishing moves that are obviously the really cool ones in terms of you know, doing some really over-the-top things. Jen will need all those moves because each enemy is uniquely cunning and powerful. You try to make all of our enemies challenging in some way. You basically have soldier types who just come in and try to pummel you. But then you've got things like sentries, so they've got big shields. So you've got to kind of bide your time and wait for their open moments before you come in and hit them. On top of those kind of things, obviously, we've got bosses as well. In each of the different kingdoms, we have kind of lead characters who are normally kind of kings and queens. And the, some of these are going to be allies, but some of them are going to be pretty nasty adversaries they're going to have to face. In the Aquas Kingdom, for example, the king has been mutated from being the good Undyne that he should have been into this kind of horrible mutant monster thing. Mastering Jen's demon forms and learning how to use Scree are keys to your success in Primal. Can you face your inner demons? So we looked up Sony Cambridge was later renamed Guerrilla Cambridge. Now they're best known for the medieval games. They did medieval. They also did that uh, Riggs Mechanical Combat, um, which I think was a what, PlayStation VR game before they were cancelled or before they were, um, what is it, um, the studio was dissolved. So it's studio is gone. It's been gone for a few years. Just below the surface of everyday life lies the world of primal. Throughout recorded time, the balance between order and chaos has been maintained. But all that is about to change. We have uh, two characters, Arella, who is kind of like a goddess character representing order, and Abaddon is uh, a character representing chaos. And Abaddon has, has decided he wants all of the uh, kind of primal energies in this, this world for himself. So he has broken some kind of eternal laws that exist between the two of them and has set into motion a plan where he has uh, disrupted the balance of, uh, of order. As far as we see it, it begins with a character called Jen who is at a nightclub with her boyfriend Lewis and Lewis is, is playing on stage in a band um, but we're seeing this character, this huge demon that's actually tracking Lewis and by the end of the sequence this demon has abducted Lewis and has left Jen lying in a coma. Initially she's just thinking she's in a dream, is she dead, what's going on? And Scree basically pulls her 
into the world of Primal, which is full of demons and monsters, and she's basically looking for her boyfriend at that time. Jen and Lewis are different from everyday people in a way that they don't even know. Um, they were both taken away as babies into this world of oblivion, and they were changed such that they have become half demon. They have no idea of these abilities that are kind of lying latent. And it's only when they're both drawn into the game we see the fact that she has the ability to shift into each of the different demon races. What have you done to me? The character that brings Jen into this world is a character called Scree. He appears to be this, this little gargoyle, but he's actually a much bigger character than he seems. And he is going to be leading Jen on this quest where she has to restore the order in these two kingdoms that have been corrupted. We want to see the relationship with Jen and Scree kind of develop through the game so that they go from Jen thinking that Scree is this funny little guy. Except he looks like a fearsome, impressive creature, and you, well, <laughs> I mean, well, you're you. Through to the end of the game where she really respects him and has seen that he has this real strength and there's a real respect that develops between yeah. the two characters. Well, you and the big man made a great team. Don't you think so, Rocky Boy? That we have a very detailed storyline. It's like a movie, really, where the, there's a lot of different subplots interlacing between each other. The way we describe characters as well, each character has a backplot, you, you learn about him, and they have a depth. So you've got this big overall story that kind of links Jen into this whole world, and then you've got the little individual stories for each of the different realms, that Jen has to go in and put the things to rights because chaos is taking over order. So Solemn is the first realm that you encounter, and it, it's, an, it's a world locked in, in perpetual winter and perpetual night. The world that they live in reflects their, their, their fall from grace. They were a much nobler, much more refined civilization, all of which has crumbled into ruin. We have a race of characters who have a king who is, uh, by their, their natural law, is, is all-powerful. He has to sacrifice himself at the height of his power and pass the uh, kingdom thrown over to his, his heir. Um, what has happened in this kingdom is the, uh, the son has been kidnapped, so the player is going to have to bring him back to his, his father so that the, uh, the king can you know, do what he should do, basically, and sacrifice himself, and the natural law there can be uh, restored. Altogether, there are four demon realms that you will explore in the world of Primal. Solem, Aquis, Aether, and Volga. These are the battlefields you will face to restore order to the world Learn each realm well, or else. Considering this was a Sony property, I wonder if there's any kind of, like, special deal that they had with the PlayStation magazine about such a big expose on it. When creating richly developed characters in a game like Primal, the voice is just as important as the animation. When it came to casting the actors for the voiceovers, um, we wanted to use actors that were really going to get into the parts and really uh, have fun with the characters. They're the kind of people that are really going to bring that character to life. Well, no. The poor Undyne Adaro was attacking must have been dead for days. Well, if he does that to him, just think what he'd be like with us. With Jen, we needed someone that was going to be able to give us a real warmth to her character, but also be able to really uh, get into the demon side of Jen and, and really let go and, you know, really sound quite, quite fierce. And... Beat the crap out of him? I think the reason that they, they wanted me is because I played a character called Callisto on Xena, Princess Warrior. So I knew at that point when they liked yeah, that's where I that saw her. it was going to be based on a strong woman and there was going to be fighting involved. Scree was really the toughest character because we wanted a voice which, which didn't sound like Scree looked, if you sort of mean. So it wasn't like a little guy's voice, or it wasn't a silly voice. It was a voice that had kind of nobility and kind of depth to it. And the, the only voice we could really think of was inspired by a character in Babylon 5 called Jakar. And this character was played by an actor called Andreas Katsoulas. But I doubt we've seen the last of King Adaro. So when they conceived of this whole thing in the character of Scree, in their minds they really heard Jakar somehow um, in that role, or, or more precisely, me, I guess. <laughs> so, I've been dead for days. It's the undying. Although both of the actors had done TV and film, this was their first video game experience. It's different working on a video game than a film because you don't have to worry about the way you look. It's not my body, it's not my likeness, it's just my voice, and it's my interpretation of the character. Then I get to act with Andres, 
and that makes it brilliant. And so you are acting. You're not just speaking or reading lines. I wouldn't want to do it without um, my fellow actor also working with me. I don't think I'd be able to do it as well without this ongoing relationship with Hudson, who's right there, and we really get into it together. So it's like doing a little mini play that no one will ever see. <laughs> Fight with great distinction. Uh-huh. There's nothing shown to us beforehand um, as to what the scene will be. They gave me a breakdown on all the characters, on all the different worlds, on all the different beings in the different worlds. So we're given that, and then it's just up to our imaginations to, um, you know, to go with it. And then everything that they draw and animate around that, we see later. Now that they have a taste of what video games are all about, Will this turn them into die-hard gamers? I've never really come into this century yet, but this might motivate me in terms of my son and my daughter as well. I think they'll both be interested in, in going through this together, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if they want me to play along with them. <laughs> I bought a PlayStation 2, and I played for 24 hours within a week. My friends were like, you have to brush your teeth, you have to wash your hair, you have to take a shower, and I wouldn't. It's, it's like a drug. I don't know how people play games and go to sleep and get up and exercise or go to work. Or, it's not possible. So the game is sort of just... I don't know, it has its ups and downs, but it's just sort of like an average game in a lot of ways. But it does show a sort of a shift in the business of games, where it does seem to have a lot of production value, and they put a lot of effort into voicing it, and they're drawing attention to the voice actors, because they, nowadays, we sort of take it for granted that there's a number of, there's a large number of, of known voice actors that you see in a lot of different games. And they're sort of like minor celebrities in that respect, but they are good at the voice acting thing. So uh, Troy Baker and, and uh, Jennifer Hale, those kinds of people. But, you know, you go back 20 years and, well, uh, how much of that market really existed? How many... How many people were... Um, of course, there were always like animated movies and stuff like that. Voice acting for that kind of stuff. But video games seem to have built their own sort of sub-industry of voice acting. And it didn't really exist 20 years ago. And we're starting to see the emphasis being placed on that with the development of this game. Available winter 2020... Or 2002. 21 years ago. Shit. Cool moves. Hi, my name is Matt Gogger. I work in third party format QA, and I'm going to teach you a cool move today on aggressive inline, and we're going to teach you how to raise your manual stats. Alright, you're going to want to start by entering in your cheat code. This is going to give you the perfect manual, which is going to allow you to let this trick on for a lot longer than it would if you were just starting with cheat the Cheat codes? Character. Holy shit. Cheat code's just something that kind of disappeared from Quez games. Quez don't sleep. No spaces. Quez now, a lot of cheat codes easy. back in the earlier days of gaming were the result of developers that, inputting these menu. things into the games and in order to make them re easier for the sake of playtesting. And they weren't really intended for like players to use, else. but they were left in the code anyway. Through the airfield. Get to enjoy the colorful loading screens. In a sense, so cheat codes exist in this manner in a certain way with console field. commands in PC games. Down where the air but you don't really see cheat codes as much in right finished release here. games anymore. Move forward so you're going at good speed. And then bust into a manual. Now what you see here is my guy bouncing off of shit. Really deviating from the course. So what I can do now is I can set the controller down, go get myself a cup of coffee, grab my official PlayStation magazine and read for a while while he builds up his stats all on his own. And it doesn't take any of my effort at all. 
All right, well, that's my cool move. And uh, for all you hardcore gamers out there, the place where I entered Quest Don't Sleep, you can also enter the Contra Code, the original Contra Code. Uh, some of you may not know what that is. Hopefully a lot of you do. Enter it in, it's going to give you the perfect hand plant, which is just as good as the perfect manual. That is so stupid. <laughs> Basically, this, I want the game to play itself. Tiger hey, Woods. I'm Mitchell, and I work at Third Party Format QA. I'm here to show you a cool move for Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2002. The move is how to get set up for a double eagle on a par five course. Okay, this cool Do move what now? is on Tiger's Dream Course, and it's on hole number ten. Okay, what you want to do instead of pointing the way that they stir you out, you want to turn the face towards this mist. And if you put the marker back as far as it can go, or on the island with the pin, you should be able to make it one shot. Jeez, he's golfing in the Matrix. Up, oh. up, oh, no, you made it. That shot just set an all-time record. Now, if you're really good or just really lucky, you'd be able to make a hole in one on the first shot. But from this point, it should be fairly easy to get a double eagle. Good luck. Okay. Metal Gear Solid 2. What's up? My name is Demarlo King. I got a cool move for Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. In this cool move, I'm going to show you how to get the suppressor for the AK-47U. Check this out. All right, here's my boy Ryder, standing on the shell one two. Oh, it's that it's it's you got to fall off of something. So busted up now. There's a big gap, so let's take a look. Let's see where's the AK suppressor? There it is. Okay, so now all we have to do is make the big jump. A little running start here. The X button right at the end. He should land safe. That looks safe. <laughs> Pick up the item there. Go ahead and grab this item here. Now, put out a little fire. Equip the coolant. Okay, once the blaze is put out, you can safely go across, grab the AK suppressor. Select the AK suppressor in your inventory here. And select the AK here. And there you have it. Now that you have the AK suppressor for the AK-74U, you can lay down the enemy soldiers with utter silence. And it will be fully automatic, systematic. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 2 was the first game that started to introduce so many weapons that it felt like useless i mean it, it not not so much in two but it just where it started the aks 74u was the assault rifle that i never found any use for in that game <laughs> and of course in metal gear solid 4 they just bombarded you with weapons you didn't have any use for so it's like oh i got it what am i going to do with it and then five it was the same story Bulletins. There's nothing here. Oh, okay. L1, R1, square. Huh. Oh, that's a different. That's a different issue. <laughs> why? Why are you telling me this now? You want me to go back to an old disc? Download station. Disney's Stitch Experiment Six Two Six. Uh, never heard of this game. I guess it's a racing game. Headhunter, limited ammo. Alright, well, I guess that's it. Well, it was the second half of issue number 63. A demo snuck its way onto this episode. That's weird. <laughs> well, thanks for watching.